Hello everybody, hi, and here I am to talk about the astrological forecast for the month of June 2018. Okay, so right back at the beginning of the new year, um, six months ago, yeah, it's halfway through, my goodness, um, I spoke about this year as being really a year of two halves, pretty much like a football match, I suppose, um, that we would have a very fast-paced um, early, uh, fast-paced six months um, to the first six months of the year, and then things would kind of settle down um, in the uh, in the last six months, and we we would do more processing. Now. I think this is still the case, I, I hope so, because if my life goes any faster, I'm going to catch myself coming back. Um, but let's see, but this, this, that's the kind of, the, that's the, the, the framework really that I'm still looking at. So, um, so, uh, so that's the backdrop to June. Now I've got some dates here, so if I keep looking down, then forgive me, but I can't keep all the dates in my head. You know, I'm going to get this diagnosed eventually. <laughs> So we start off with the uh, the, the, um, the full moon, um, which is in Sagittarius because the sun is in Gemini, and that's on the 29th of May. So it sort of kicks off uh, June. Um, and actually what that's about is learning. It's about information. It's about learning. It's about uh, connecting up. It's about reaching out to connect up to get information. Now you can do that by looking into groups or, or connecting with people on Facebook or researching things online. Um, and a lot of people, of course, take exams around this time of the year. So this is a, a really a good thing to help them get through their exam season. Um, but anyway, so there we go. That's that's the full moon um, in Sagittarius right at the beginning. Um, now, in general, for the first three weeks of June, the sun should be facilitating our networking and our conversations. So this reaching out should be, you know, well supported and we should be all be able to learn and inquire more than we normally can. Um, and we also need now, after the first six months are, are, are passed, we need now to be laying down those issues that have been behind us coming up, bubbling up, constantly recurring. Over the last couple of weeks, what should have happened is issues from the past should have come up one more time and now you can finally lay them to rest. You should now be putting down the jigsaw pieces for the final picture. You should now be dealing with the issues that remain after you have had so much to do to put things right in your life. The things that have that were no longer useful for your future may have passed out of your life you need now to pick up the pieces and to grow a new future um, it may be that something that couldn't get resolved you were waiting for a result that has finally come through so now you can put that into place and you can move on all of these issues now need to be settled this is what you should be working on so hopefully that's what you're doing um, so we then can look forward to something of a magical, mystical June, if I'm going to be honest. It has a very sort of mysterious quality to it. Um, on June the 1st, we have a grand trine in water. So what does that mean? It means that around the planet, we have um, three planets making up a triangle around us. Um, so the three planets concerned are uh, Jupiter, Neptune and Venus. Um, and we've got Jupiter in Scorpio, we've got Neptune in Pisces, and we've got Venus in Cancer. Um, and what that means is that there is a very emotional environment, a very supportive, watery, sensitive, emotional environment. Um, and this is a feminine energy which looks into the past. The, this, uh, it, it, it hides really into the roots of the underworld of our existence um, and as such it works in mysterious ways in dark ways in ways that we won't be really obvious and this is the processing this is the emotional adjustment that needs to take place at, at this half point in the year so um, now, Jupiter and Neptune remain roughly in place, actually, throughout June, and other planets come in to join them in Cancer. Um, so we still keep this grand trine in water really right through the month. Um, Athena and Mercury um, come in around the 16th and the 21st of June, for instance, to join these two other planets. And so there's... It's the theme really is for this emotional sensitive processing that which underscores everything 
Um, so you may get kind of magical, mysterious things happening, like deja vu, flashes of insight, things coming in from the past. And you think, wow, it's a strange coincidence. I was only talking about that friend the other day and there they are in front of me now, across the way. Hi, th th all this kind of stuff. But it all has meaning, that very sort of low key meaning, really. So you need to be very sensitive to this beautiful environment. Um, we may spend the month looking for answers. We, we may be searching for something because it may make things a little bit hard to find down here in the deep oceanic waters. Um, Neptune describes our longings and our unrealistic euphoric dreams. So we've got this kind of misty calling and longing and pining and yearning going on. We have an invisible connectedness. So bear this in mind. Things might not be obvious. Things are invisibly connected at the moment. So you're going to have to do a lot of trusting that the connection is being made. It's not going to be so obvious as it has been just recently. From the 5th of June to the 11th of June, um, Venus opposes Pluto and then Juno squares Pluto. So this, mm, this means activity in relating. I hope it means good activity, but whatever it does mean is Pluto. Um, and Pluto is always about transforming, evolving and moving on. So things become what they must become. If, if Pluto makes sure that things grow into their future. Um, so, yeah, there could be a few issues there. But remember, it's good for you. You're growing into the future. Allow your relationship to change and let it evolve. Um, don't be scared. Don't try and keep it stagnant. Move with it. Um, we have the Gemini new moon around the 13th of June. So that's definitely all about learning and talking and connecting. That's a big Facebook date, that one. Um, and then the sun changes sign on the solstice, which this year is actually on the 21st of June. And then the sun then moves into Cancer, uh, zero degrees Cancer. And so it ushers in an even more mysterious atmosphere. Um, so uh, look out for that one. We should really kind of like sort of sink into our sensitivities. Um, this is a time for being aware of your emotional in, uh, in escape. Um, be listening to your emotional feelings and uh, be aware of family issues and working with family, meeting family, because cancer, the energy of cancer tends to bring up family stuff. I think that's probably why um, we're all summer holidaying with families. Um, around that time. Um, the astrology seems to be reflecting that. Okay, so there we go. That That's June. Um, it's very hot and humid here in the UK as I'm talking to you, um, and that's lovely. And I hope um, the sun shines in your life, metaphorically, if not uh, in reality. Um, and I hope that you are warmed by the gentle waters of life and the sensitive, beautiful, beguiling feelings of this uh, of this grand shrine in water around us so so feel sort of wrapped up with the angel's wings and prepare for sensitivities people are going to be a little more sensitive sensitive than usual be careful what you say you know you, these are times when we have to just be a little aware of people's hurt feelings and work in an area to help um, restore faith trust um, heal woundedness these are healing times for emotions so take advantage of that if you would like to have a reading with me, I would love to hear from you. I do so like to work with clients and everybody always says 100% of my clients afterwards say I feel so much better. I understand my life more. I have much more meaning in my life. So and I would love to share that with you, too. I'd like you also to get that clarity, that understanding and that sense of meaning. So I would love to talk to you. Now, it's my birthday at the moment, so um, I'm not here for the uh, the right at the end of May. I'm not here, but I am back um, for the weekend, the first, second of June. So, and I've got all the time in the world for you then. I'd love to talk to you. So, uh, so thank you. Um, and I loved talking to you and big hug and let's all be lovely and snuggly and sensitive and emotional together. And that feels great. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.